All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chang Gang Podcast. This is episode 56 featuring Linda, a.k.a. Valon. Linda, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you for committing time for this. How's it going? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm good. I got Boba, so I'm like happy. <laughs> boba is the way, guys. I know. I think I saw you on your last podcast. You were drinking Boba too, right? Yes. I usually have a drink, so it's nice. What do you um, just water and coke. <laughs> it, it's all good. Oh, that's not bad. Yes, indeed. But thank you to everyone for being here, especially if you're in chat. So, for you guys to know, this is episode 56. We have on the bottom right our Instagrams. So, if you want to drop a follow, please feel free to do so. We also have two special commands for every podcast. The first one is exclamation podcast. In short, Basically, I do these to get to know my friends on a more personal level, especially because we're like Twitch streamer friends, you know, and you can only learn so much about people. And secondly, exclamation guest, which is a direct link to Linda's channel. She is also a fellow streamer, so feel free to follow. Let's go. Show some love. All right, Linda, let's get started. Give us a good overview of who you are and include some of your hobbies and interests. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, my Twitch name, because I know people say it wrong sometimes, it's Valon. I know it's, people think it's like Valan. It's Valon. My name is also Linda. You can ca call me either or. The reason why uh, my Twitch name is Valon is because um, it's my Chinese nickname that my parents gave to me. So they literally called me that every single day. They'll be like, Valon, you know. Or in like okay. their Chinese accent, they'll be like, Valon. They'll say it like that. And um, I am 29, <laughs> turning 30 this year. Badge. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch. I'm I'm trying to get into YouTube, but it's just you know, there's just so much content that I want to push out, but I don't do it because it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I do. I also have TikTok, uh, you know, Instagram, like you talked about earlier, Twitter. Uh, fan house fan house is mainly um, gym content it's just another way to support me as a content creator and then um i work out a lot so so that's like my main hobby i used to go hiking a lot too but ever since quarantine happened it's kind of like you know less outdoorsy stuff more indoorsy and like just going to the gym as long as i stay active i'm i'm kind of set yeah i don't know what else to say all good Two dogs I have a Shiba Inu. He's mm -hmm. turning 11 this year. And then I have a, a pit bull. I think he's turning seven this year. They're, they're literally opposites. My Shiba is cranky, moody, very mean. And he's like, you know, like a white-ish Shiba. And then my pit bull, he's like tricolored. So he's mainly black, tan, and a little bit of white. But he's like the nicest little guy ever. Mm -hmm. So they're like opposite. Oh, sorry. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> They're like yin and yang, literally, when I explained them. Yeah. Yeah. And then I stay with my parents, so I kind of take care of my parents in a sense because they're retired. Mm -hmm. So I live with them. Yeah, so. And then okay. also Sam, aimbot, boyfriend. <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> that's important. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. My brother, and, you know, me and my brother, it's just me and him. Um, he's two years older than me, so he's 31, 32, 32, 32, sorry. And he has a kid. She's two years old. The only, uh, yeah, the only okay. little baby in the family. Okay, <laughs> so that's a great overview. Overview. So how would you describe your personality, though? My personality? Mm -hmm. That's hard. <laughs> because I feel like... I can adjust my personality based on what I'm doing or who I'm around. Mm -hmm. Like when we met Wilson, like when we met IRL, I was really shy. I was nervous because I was like, oh. "Oh, we're gonna meet, we're gonna meet a whole bunch of people. I'm nervous. I'm shy. I'm like, oh, I'm scared. You know, like that's that's kind of who I am. But then if I'm like streaming, you get like, oh, are you muffled? Am I? Oh, you were for a second. You're fine now. Oh, you started okay. sounding like a demon. What? I, was like, I was like, Wilson, you sound like a demon. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, no, you're fine. Um, but yeah, if I'm like streaming on Twitch, I'm kind of like a 
I'm kind of loud and like really, really, really um outgoing, I would say. And not I'm I'm I feel like I'm kind of shy still, but I'm less shy when I'm in front of my camera. But if I'm in front of someone else's camera, I'll probably be really, really like nervous and shy. I don't know how to explain it. It's like it depends on the situation type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, like when I hang out with my IRL friends now, I get really anxious. Like I never used to be like that. So I think quarantine changed me a lot. I see. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm filled feel with a lot of anxiety. I, it doesn't seem like it, but I'm very anxious. Yeah, a lot goes yeah. like a lot happens when the camera's off too, right? So. Mhm. Mm for sure. For sure. Okay, so briefly talk about your relationship with your parents and your brother from back then versus now. Mm. Back then, like as a kid? Yeah. Mm. Let's see. When I was a kid, I feel like I relied on my brother for a lot of things. So we were really close. We're still really close right now too, but uh, my parents would always be working. And because they were um, either business owners at the time or they're just managing something, they weren't really home. So it was just me and my brother taking care of each other. And he would always make me food. So I think mainly we would see our dad because he would pick us up from school and stuff. But my mom would be working the majority of the time. So what I remember more of is just my, me and my brother always being home. And he's always on his those big old computers you know with the big it's like why what are those what are those called those big old monitors yeah just and the dial up internet ones, uh -huh. yeah my brother would be on a computer while i'm i don't know what i was doing probably playing with toys or something maybe yeah and it would just be us two at home and then when i'm hungry i'll tell him he'll make me food probably like burn himself a little bit because you know he's he's only two years older than me so <laughs> and then <laughs> now as adults my parents are always home because they're retired now my brother is mm -hmm. doing his own thing because he has his family but we talk like at least like five times a week he would call me randomly he would talk about things yeah and you know i talk to my parents every day because i see them mm -hmm. but in um asian culture i guess like we don't really communicate 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 that well mm -hmm. so i remember us being kids like we would always keep things to ourselves but now as adults me and my brother, we try to teach them how to communicate. It's crazy because, like, you know, when you were, we're, the, we're, we feel like we're the adults and they're the kids because yeah. we're teaching them, you know, like how to communicate, how to talk about things. And I don't know, it's kind of like the role switch in a sense. Yes. Yeah. I see what you mean. Mm hmm. So that's how it is now. Okay. And aside from that, so think back to like even when you were born. Give us like a good overview of what your lifestyle was like up until let's say the end of high school and then I'll ask you some specific questions. My lifestyle before high school. Yeah, like I guess from when you were born, like let's say if you were born uh -huh. in LA, how life yeah. was like up until the end of high school. Ooh, okay, yeah. okay. Mm, my parents are, were, they were immigrated here so they uh, we're first gen. Me and my brother were first gens here. So, uh, for what I remember, I remember living in these apartments, you know, um, off of welfare, off of housing, because my parents didn't really make a lot of money. And the main thing I remember about the apartments is that it's just, you know, people living in poverty, just, there's a lot of cockroaches. So every time I would wake up in the middle of the night, I would go to the bathroom, it's like cockroaches all over the sink, or if you go into the kitchen, you're opening the cabinets, there's cockroaches all over the place. But, but the, the good thing about these apartments is that our elementary school was only like two blocks away, so we could just literally walk. And then the apartments were full of um, immigrant, and immigrated families too, so we all like were childhood friends. So we all kind of walked to school together, we went to elementary together, we went to middle school together. Um, some, some, some of us went to high school together. And... Yeah, it's just, I remember that mainly. It's just like, I guess it's kind of traumatizing, you know, waking up and seeing cockroaches every day. Yeah. But as a kid, it was very normal. And then now as an, as an adult, it's like, when I see a cockroach, I literally scream. Like, I'll just scream and run. But I'm just like, I used to see them every day. There was like thousands of them. <laughs> but it's just a big difference because, you know, going from seeing them every day to not seeing them anymore. Kind of like, you know, being like your biggest fear if you're scared of spiders, like, you'll freak out. Because yeah. it's kind of scary. Um, 
when I went to elementary school, I remember my parents working a lot. And it was me and my brother, you know, same thing. Like, we took care of each other. We would walk home. My dad would pick us up sometimes. My dad was the only one that drove. My mom doesn't drive. She had her license, but I think she was just scared of driving because the roads are scary or something. Mm. And then going into, okay, so middle school, going into high school, I remember getting bullied Ooh. from a girl that, I don't know, she, she, we liked the same guy. She was a year older than me. And I don't know, I guess like, I guess girls like to bully each other or something. I don't, I don't know. So I got bullied. Um, they showed up, <laughs> this is really traumatizing. They showed up at my house, knocked on my door. And I remember I instant messaged my friend. I was like, tell them I'm not home because she was with them. Like, you know, middle school, like everybody's friends with each other. So I told her, I was like, tell them I'm not home. And then she was like, oh, it's too late. I already told them you're home. And I was like, you want me to get into a fight? Like, there's nobody home. My brother went to a different middle school than me, so he wasn't home yet. Home alone. So I was like, yeah, I'm not opening the door. But I literally, there's two doors, like a wooden door and then a screen door. So I opened the wooden door and I was like, hi. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, like I was scared because I was a kid. I was like, what are you guys doing here? You know, there was like, three or four girls and then I see like a whole bunch of guys just watching because you know guys want to watch girls fight so I never opened the screen door but basically I just ended up telling them like no I can't open the door like why would I open the door stuff like that and they, you know they kept harassing me at school and stuff but I did not eventually it stopped mm -hmm. so that's good well it stopped because she's a year older so she ended up leaving I'm um, going to high school and then I was still there for eighth grade but then I ended up going to the same high school as her but she didn't do nothing because she wasn't dating him anymore. So I was like, oh, I guess. So then I went to high school and I guess there was less, there was no bullying in high school, which is nice. I was just, I guess I was in, put in that category of like a really smart Asian, you know, like another smart Asian in high school. Cause I, w I went to a really white, white high school. There's a lot of white people. <laughs> and you know, you have these little groups of Asian people um the jocks the cheerleaders uh what are those those groups of people asb do you guys have do you guys yeah, have that too like leadership yeah yeah so there's a group of asb and then like depending on the program you're in in high school like there's little groups there's little cliques stuff like that and then also uh i just hung out you know like with mainly asians i guess like the nerdy little asian group mm -hmm. um yeah, it was, it was like a, I felt like it was like a normal little high school, high school uh, experience and environment. So it wasn't too bad. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Nice. Thank you for the Ordinary. overview. No problem. So more about like the area where you lived. How would you really describe the diversity in the background? Not only of the people, but of like the place, like the city itself. Ooh. Oh, okay. So... LA is very diverse. There's a mixture of everything and everything, uh, literally anything and everything. Um, like you're talking, excuse me, if you're talking about my high school, there was a way more white people than anything else. My middle school is kind of ghetto, <laughs> so um, the diversity there was a lot of Mexicans, Hispanics. LA is a, there's a lot of Hispanics here. Um. You sound like a demon again. Demon. So weird, I'm not even saying anything. <laughs> Whoa, what is that background sound then? I hear something. Oh. That was um, weird. Sorry? No, 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 that's fine. I was just wondering okay. what that was. Maybe it's like picking up something? Maybe, I have my noise suppression on too. But just no, let me know right. if it happens again. Okay, okay. <laughs> this, this stream here too, or is it just me? The heater. Oh, my heater's off. I don't know. I don't know. I was just reading chat. <laughs> you, they hear it too. What? It literally sounds like a demon. Wait, let I wonder me hear if it's the stream. music, because I do have music too. No, the it's music like the is waves, nice no? and calming. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it was like it picked up something. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. What was the question again? If... The background and diversity. You said your school mm. had a lot of uh, white people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. My high school and then middle school, a lot of Hispanics and blacks. Um, but overall, my high school is a mixture, but there's mainly white people. So, yeah. And then when I went to college, it's just really, really, really diverse. So, I feel like LA is just super... There's a lot of... Um, there's a mixture of a lot of people. Alrighty, and finish up the topic with your family. How did your parents handle discipline whenever you guys acted out? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> They're old school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would find the first thing and turn it into a weapon. And we would have to like literally, uh, depending on how bad we were, I guess, they would either just whip us on a booty, like, you know, we would lay down flat on the floor. Either they would hit us on our butts or they would make us like pull down our pants a little bit so that we can hit they can hit our actual skin on our butt yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah so it depends on depends on the punishment and how and what we did but that's like a normal thing for us but mm -hmm. they don't do it anymore obviously because we're, we're adults but they 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 always go for the physical punishments i see yeah old school <laughs> all right so you did talk a little bit about your school experience already so we'll cover the rest of it um mm -hmm. you mentioned that you were a part of like the nerdy asian group so academically were you just like killing it or what throughout um, your years of in education? high school yeah mm -hmm. in high school i was in college uh i don't know i started partying in college so kind of it was like average but in high school it was good I think I had like I think I graduated with like a three point I, I think like a three point nine four almost four point oh. I see. Yeah, but I think it's because I got a B in my AP one of my AP classes instead of an A. Mm -hmm. I forgot what happened. I can't remember. But I went to go ask him. I was like, Oh, I'm so close to an A. Can you just give it to me so I can graduate with a four point oh? And he was like, No. Nope. I was uh like, Okay. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> yeah. But I was I think I was a pretty smart student in high school. The college, I just when I started learning how to party. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that briefly after. Mm -hmm. uh, were you involved with like any other specific clubs or activities or even sports? Um, high school. What what is that group where you do community service and it's a whole bunch of Asian people? Is it like Key Club or something? Key Club. Yeah, I was part of Key Club. Um, I didn't do. I didn't really do any sports. Okay, no sports. Yeah, but I was in Geek Club. I mean, I had PE, I guess, but I didn't really play any sports. Okay, so what would you say your stereotype was in high school? Like, like how I dressed? Or like, if someone saw you in high school, what did they think of you? Huh. Because you said there's like jocks, like the nerds oh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like, would you actually be one of those... Like Asian nerds or something? I mean, I don't. Hmm. I think. I don't know. I don't know. I have to ask my friend. Okay. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder what they would say because I really don't know how to answer that. I mean, I I knew I hung out with like nerdy Asians, but I don't think I dress. You know how like nerdy Asians like glasses. Uh. I guess dress t-shirts mm -hmm. what else would girls wear i don't know i don't I'm not sure but i don't think i would be considered like looking like an a nerdy asian yeah Maybe just your typical asian were you girl, well known at least too? well known um i dated a, i dated a guy in the football team i think 10th grade so i wouldn't say like well known but just more of like um people we we, we the jocks the jocks knew me i guess yeah uh -huh, got it <laughs> i don't know how to explain it i guess i never even asked this question so no no yeah. no worries no worries <laughs> all right so you briefly mentioned how you were bullied back in like middle school with that one girl were there any other encounters with bullying and if so how did you kind of get past it yeah so when i was um 
remember when I said me and my brother we would always stay home so when we would do laundry mm -hmm. it was at, our, at these apartments there was I was always scared to do laundry because there was always this kid he's I think the same age as my brother so two years older than me he would always like be walking around the apartments looking for kids to bully so whenever I go do my laundry you have to like use a key to unlock the laundry door so I was doing my laundry and I saw him walk by and like I would have to hide because he literally bullies everybody I don't know why or maybe it was just me and my brother that got bullied by him but growing up I, I found out that he actually bullies everybody so um when he saw me in the laundry room by myself doing laundry he tried to like get in but he didn't have the key so I was just hiding in the corner and I was like what do I do you know like my brother's at home my brother gets bullied by him too and I was just a kid so I just stayed in the corner and waited for him to leave and then when he left I like ran home and I told my brother and he's like oh are you okay and I was like yeah I'm okay mm -hmm. <laughs> but he would do that often I remember um one time he like pushed me in the laundry room um there was nothing really because me being a kid I never told my parents and I was just like whatever he's gonna stop eventually I think he like just outgrew bullying because he lived there for a while too and I've seen him as an adult now, like he was working at a bank or whatever. He remembers me. And I was like, oh, I remember you, you freaking bully. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know. It's just there's nothing I really did to overcome it. Just more of like, just ignore it and just keep going on. Yeah. Um, in high school, I guess, or middle school to high school, it was that girl that bullied me. I never really I never really fought back. That's the thing. Like mm -hmm. me. The younger me never fought back because I was always scared. I was very timid. The way my parents raised me was to always respect others, you know? So I never really like thought about fighting back because I was scared. Uh, but me as an adult now, like you, mm, mm, I, I will, I will probably like, when I get angry now, like I cry, I will probably cry, but I'll, I'll, I will not get bullied. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'll, yeah. I'll be angry. I won't get bullied like you'll stand up for as an adult yeah I'll, I'll definitely stand up for myself the thing is I would r rather stand up for my friends than myself so mm -hmm. if someone were to like say something rude to me I would probably ignore it but if someone were to say something rude to my friends then that's when I would probably say something back yeah. just because like I'm just I guess I have patience like I can ignore things I won't let it get to me sometimes I am okay <clears throat> so with that being said um, back then you were timid. Have you ever gotten into a physical altercation in your life or fights? Mm, yes, I have. What's the um, story? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so <clears throat> this was during my college days. Mm -hmm. We went to the bar and I, we, you know, me and my friends, we drank. And I guess, you know, when you're dancing, people like bump into each other, right? Yeah. So this girl, she just constantly just kept bumping into me. And I was like, I don't know if you're drunk, but you're probably drunk, but it's fine. Because, <laughs> you know, people are drunk, they drink, they bump into each other. Um, but after, so once we like left the club, well, I think it was like a bar. It was a bar. Mm -hmm. so once we left the bar, I think we ended up seeing them like waiting for their driver or something. I have no idea. And the girl said something to us. And I ignored it, but my girlfriends, my two other girlfriends were like, you know, they ended up wanting to get into an altercation. And then I'm over here, like, you know, just walking to my car or walking to the car. And then all of a sudden they're just like bickering at each other. And then the guys get in between it and the guys are trying to stop the girls from fighting. And then I come in and I'm like, you know, trying to stop the fight too. Like, what are you guys fighting about? And then the girl sees me walk up and she just punches me and I'm like, wait why did i just get punched you know like i'm trying to stop this i'm trying to stop this but you know like it, it just felt like a little tap you know like a, like a little love tap so i was like did she really just hit me like i was like what was that <laughs> and then that's when the her guy's friend guy friend started pulling her back and i was like but we all kind of like tried to go after her but you know it's just too many guys stopping it so i was like oh okay i just got punched but it didn't i didn't feel anything so it, I didn't, it didn't really affect me <laughs> <laughs> but also it was three girls it was me and my two friends and she was by herself with a whole bunch of her guy friends yeah so yeah that was that was the only thing i i never really actually punched i guess punched someone i think mm -hmm. sober so <laughs> maybe i have hit someone when i was drunk i don't remember though <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Okay. But yeah, that's the only altercation that I really fully remember. Mm-hmm. Have you ever sustained like a severe injury in your life? Oh yes. Mhm. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be a good story. Okay. Uh, went to Vegas. How old was I? 20, 20, 22, 23, I think. Um, my parents didn't know. <laughs> So, uh-huh. um, they just thought I was sleeping over at a friend's house or something. So I went for the weekend and then, um, I was really drunk at night. I think we were just drinking at the hotel or something. And, and then we drove to go get some, um, Earl sandwich. Is that what it's called? It's like that really, have you ever been to Vegas? Yeah, but I don't really remember the places, honestly. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, it's like a really good sandwich place and there's okay. only one location of it in Vegas. So we drove there. And I saw my friends there, you know, we we're in the parking garage and my friends were sticking their heads out of the car, like in the the sunroof area. Mm-hmm. And in my drug ass was like, oh, that looks fun. Can I do it too? So they come down and I go up and then my friend that's driving forgets that I'm up there. So he drives forward and you know how in the parking garage there's like not lower ceilings, but just like little areas where the ceiling comes down and then it. Yeah. Yeah. So he fucking forgets that I'm up there and he drives really fast. And I see it coming, so I try to duck, and then I duck a little too late, so my whole head, not my whole head, but a little piece of my head hits it, Mm. and then I sit down, right, because I'm not sober. So I sit down, and I'm like, um, I feel something on my head, but I'm sitting in the back seat, so I was like, I felt like something leaking on my face, and I touch it, and I'm like, it's dark. I couldn't tell, but it was wet. So I told Sam, which is Avot, I was like, I, I think I'm bleeding. And then he looks at me with the scared, like the most scared face. He's like, you know, like his eyeballs. Just yeah. Like, and he's like, oh my God. And then we get out the car. My my friend parked the car and we get out the car. And then everybody's just looking at me like I'm dying. Like they literally look at me with, like I see everybody's face. They're all like, mm-hmm. You know, like scared, and they're like, "We have to call 911. We have to call 911." I was like, "No, guys, I'm fine. I'm like, well, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, I'm okay. It's totally fine." They're like, "We have to call the paramedics. We have to call the paramedics." And I was like, "No, you guys don't. No, it's okay. We don't have to." They end up calling it, and then two paramedics come, and they they look at my my scar. I still have the scar to this day. Um, they're like, you know, we recommend that you go to the hospital and get stitches. And I was like, "No, no, no. It's okay. I'll be fine." You know, like I was thinking about like what would happen if I do go and then like everybody's going to be all bummed out, all worried about me. So I was like, no, it's fine. And then the security guard of the building like walks us to the restroom because it's already, I think like the restrooms close by are far or they're closed. Mm -hmm. So he walks us to like the security guard bathroom and they wash up the wound and everything and the paramedics clean it up. But yeah, so it's, it's still scarred right here. Wow. But that's like the worst injury that i've had so my whole face was just covered in blood i was like oh Mm -hmm. yeah but i mean like i just went on the weekend because i think it was like friday night or saturday night so it was the beginning no i think it was friday night so it was the beginning of our trip so i didn't want to ruin it for everyone so i just i just dug it out for the whole weekend and we just kept going and partied and did whatever and just drank you know Uh (laughs) okay so transitioning out of high school what did you decide to do after that mm. in terms of college like what degree were you pursuing and you could also give us like an overview of how your life was after high school up until today aside from streaming because we'll talk about that okay um after high school i decided to go to college uh, when i was going to college i had no idea what i wanted to do but i think like me being close to certain people like they were majoring in certain things or taking certain classes so I took it with them and then I was like, oh, I kind of like this. It was, it was um, focused on healthcare administration. So I did that and then I ended up getting a degree in it. So I have a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration. And um, from there, I think I took like a, a year break of, after college and I went traveling a year ish. I think just about. Yeah, I went traveling. Or a brother, and it's at the time it was his girlfriend. Uh, we went to Paris. We went to um, Barcelona. We went to London. We went to Ireland. We went to Iceland. We went to a whole bunch of places. 
So that was really fun. It was really neat being able to travel. I had I had a lot of lot of fun. And then I think when I came back, that's when like I got a job working at um a healthcare place. So I was working full time. I was I think I worked there for like almost nine months or so. And then I realized like I was like, bro, this job sucks because there was this one incident where the director director of our department decided to I guess yell it was okay so basically I did something wrong right mm -hmm. but she decided to yell at me or yell at our whole team in front of the whole floor so she could have pulled us all into the office and just talked to us but she decided to assert her dominance and mind you she's new she's a new director yeah so she wanted to assert her dominance on us and basically she didn't say any names, but she just yelled at us as a team. And I was like, you suck. <laughs> I was like, why am I working for you? Like, you really suck. So I ended up putting in my two weeks after that incident. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a week or two later after she like went off on us. So basically the thing is why she ended up lecturing all of us is because there was a program that was down, right? So as a, we basically, <clears throat> We work with uh, members healthcare and stuff. So we always like verify if, if, if it's valid or if it's not. And then this program wasn't working and it wasn't our fault. It's just, you know, the system. And she basically told us, you guys can't work on this because you don't have the program to do it. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And then, so when I responded to an email, I basically said that. And I said that the, rec the director, our director said, we're not able to work on it right now. So, um, you know, just let us give us some time until we can work on it. And then the director was like, oh, you can't put the blame on me. You have to like, you know, basically she's just saying like, oh, she was getting blamed for what she said, but she didn't want to get blamed. If that makes sense. Yeah. So basically it seems like we didn't want to do our job, but it, the reality of it is just the program wasn't working. But it's because I put it on her saying that she told us not to do it. So yeah. it's just it's just like miscommunication and just her trying to be dominant. It's just I don't know. I just, I just didn't like it. I was like, I don't want to work for anyone. I want just, I just want to be my own boss type of thing. Yeah. So from there, um, that's when I started streaming. And then I was also helping my parents with their um, restaurant. So they did have a restaurant, but they wanted to retire. So that's another reason why I put in my two weeks to quit to help them with their restaurant. Uh, cause Let's my dad's see. health, yeah, my dad's health was going downhill. So, um, he needed extra, extra help. And my mm -hmm. brother, you know, he's, he lives somewhere else. He has a family. And so I was like, okay, let me just put in my two weeks. Let me quit. Let me help you guys. So you guys can, you know, refocus and settle, settle in with whatever you want to do. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you already mentioned some of the jobs you handled, right? So let's yeah. talk about all the jobs your entire work experience from the first <laughs> one like how you got the job what went down and then you could transition from there and i guess you could skip the healthcare one if since you already talked about it okay um when i was in high school i took this class i think it was my technically like my sixth period class mm -hmm. uh i forgot what it was called but you basically get a job from that class so i ended up getting a job at finish line at my like local mall close by my high school yeah so i got a job at finish line i was working there for free technically because you know it's just for the class mm -hmm. so i worked there for what two hours two times a week i think two or three times a week and then eventually they hired me so i started working at finish line um so that was my first job i worked at finish line and i really liked my boss because he was really cool and the discounts was nice and it was just nice. an easy job yeah really easy job because you know you just work at the mall and you just sell shoes or whatever and he really liked me because i was able to like you know how like when you when you when someone's buying shoes you try to sell them accessories like sell them some socks or sell them some um uh -huh. some shoe cleaner and stuff and i actually was able to do that or do it for some people some customers and my, my boss really liked that so he was like oh he he, he and i got along really well so yeah, 
uh, that was my first one, and then, um, um, my, hmm, I can't remember. Oh, wait, that's not even my first one. I used to work at the cafeteria. Oh. High school. Okay. I used to work in the school cafeteria. Yeah, I used to be, I used to work the breakfast shift, you know, like the early, early morning. Like, we would have to go there at, we would have to mm -hmm. get, we were supposed to get there at 6 a.m. I would always get there at 6.30. 6 30 and then we would work the breakfast shift you know like prep the food make it prep it for lunch too and then i would work the lunch shift so it's pretty much you leave your fourth period class about 15 minutes early and then you go you know you prep the food and stuff and then you serve it to the students so yeah i did that mm -hmm. that was my first one technically yeah so i was getting paid like if you actually work your full hours i think it was like three hundred dollars a month okay and that was a lot because you know mm -hmm. in high school back in the days like all you really need is gas money and you know money for whatever you want to do for food or whatever on the weekends because that's all i would do is drive to school drive home and then maybe sometimes go out on the weekends which is just going to the mall and hanging out with friends yeah so yeah, three hundred dollars is a lot for a month for me at least. Mm -hmm. Also, my parents would give me money too. Um, so yeah, working in a cafeteria to working at finish line, and then I think I was working a lot at my parents' restaurant too at the time. Um, during high school, college ish. Sometimes yeah, because they would always need help here mm -hmm. and there. Um, since my mom doesn't drive, my dad would always do the driving, so I would help out too since I drive. Uh, me and my brother will always help. Mm, and then I think officially I started working with my brother doing marketing things. Um, like uh, we would we would we would have a website and then we would sell things from there, stuff like that. Or I would help him run a website for his his um his not it's not his company but the company he works for. It was like little things here and there. But yeah, I was working with him and. I think that was pretty much it. And then we go to the healthcare job. Yeah. The restaurant is always like in and out. I mean, but okay. Yeah, in between, yeah. And then back to the, the healthcare job. And then to streaming now. I see. Mm hmm <clears throat> Do you have like any interesting stories like when it comes to dealing with people, especially maybe at like the restaurant or finish line? Oh, finish line? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it was just a straightforward job because you're you're at the mall and just people come in, they go. I don't think I had any crazy stories. Mm -hmm. Um, my parents' restaurant it was at Venice Beach. Okay. So I don't know if you know if Venice Venice City in general, like Venice Beach, it's like um, they house a lot of um, homeless people. So okay. I think the the main um, city where they take in a lot of homeless people is Venice. I'm not sure if that's a fact, but I do know that because of my mom. She told me, and also she knew, like, a couple of people who ran, like, the homeless shelters and stuff out there. Um, so we do run into a lot of homeless people. A lot of people who don't have money to buy food and whatnot. So people would come in, and they would, like, try to steal things, or they would steal the tip jar, and they will pretend like they didn't steal it, stuff like that. Or you would come in, they, people would come in and just complain about prices, even though, you know, Chinese fast food is kind of cheap, but you know, there's always people who always want to get into an argument. Or if like I hear it again. Oh no. Okay. What was that? I think it is the heater, huh? Mm. I don't know. I think it's Did chat maybe, hear it? Maybe the keyboard. I don't know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> okay, but it stopped. It stopped. Okay. Um, it's just like a really quick, like, it sounds like a demon just mumbling in my ear. I'm like, oh my god, Wilson, is that you? <laughs> okay, she did hear it. Mish heard it. Maybe it's the keyboard. I don't know. I think it's when you're moving something and then it picks up something in the background. Okay. I don't know, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, what was I saying about Venice? Um, yeah, there's. I wouldn't say there's crazy people, but just people who need help. And sometimes I would run into them. I mean, I've gotten to arguments. 
I remember this one time I, was, I, I came to close the shop and pick up the workers and drop them off at home. Mm-hmm. And this guy, he's like a regular customer. He always comes in drunk, like when we're closing. But this one time he was really, really drunk where he was like belligerent. So I ended up getting into an argument with him. Oh, I sad. forgot what it was about, but I got into an argument with him. Remember how I told you I, I cry when I get really angry? So I was like yelling at him, but also crying. <laughs> and I was just like, it was just, it was just a bad situation. Like I felt bad because at the end of the day, like he's, you know, he's drunk for a reason. Like he's going through something. So yeah, stuff like that. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what happened to him after. I, I feel like he still, he still came around after because you know he was drunk. He probably doesn't remember it. But yeah, I, it's just like that, like little arguments here and there. And, like you just have to learn how to approach people a certain way because people will i guess they will argue with you yeah and it's just like you gotta learn how to ignore it or just keep it moving type of thing for sure okay mm-hmm. all right so moving forward to more social life aspects give us an overview of your partying phase so partying mm. clubs raves whatever you're interested in I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> but when I was younger, for sure, I was I would drink a lot, a lot. I would get really drunk, and then I would also get my friends really drunk. And then the next day, they'll be like, "You got me so drunk," and I'm like, "Me? Really? Are you okay?" <laughs> and then we would go, we would go again. Uh, I would literally drink from like, we would call every day, like, like Thursday, Thursday, mm-hmm. fucked up Fridays, you know. Blah, 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 blah. We would drink Thursday to Monday and then we'd go again. Just every other weekend or every weekend. Back in the days yeah. during my prime time. But not anymore. Shit's hard. I can't even. I drank like two soju bottles on stream and I just. I was hungover for a whole day. The next day I was like dying. Can't. I can't <laughs> anymore. It's, it's just not. It's just not worth it. But. I never really, I was never really into raves or anything, just more of like house parties. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was drinking, I think like, what was I drinking back then? I think I was a broke college student, so I was just drinking like Jack Daniels. Um, what else? Ciroc, I remember drinking Ciroc. Ciroc was really good. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know. I just, I honestly just kind of drank anything because, you know, being a college student, everything's expensive. Alcohol is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we would go to clubs or to bars, you know, go um, celebrate birthdays at the bar or something, get a table, bottle service, stuff like that, you know, bougie things. Uh huh. But. Yeah, now it's 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 a lot harder because of COVID. Well, for one, I'm scared. People don't be wearing masks. I don't trust people. <laughs> and then just like being in a in a club or a bar where it's crowded, I just kind of feel anxious because I don't trust strangers, and I just don't know if everybody's vaccinated and stuff. And also because I live with the parents, I feel like if I was living on my own, I wouldn't care as much because of the fact that um, if I do get sick, it would just be me. Yeah. Yeah. So my parents, I don't want to put them at risk. At risk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess, quick questions in regards to drinking. Favorite drink and least favorite when it comes to alcohol? Ooh. I really like soju right now. Okay. It's just yummy. <laughs> um, but if you're talking about least favorite, oof least favorite would be i don't like tequila it gives me a really 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 bad hangover also it gets me it gets me really riled up i just feel like sometimes when i drink tequila i'd be angry i don't know though maybe i'm just hanging out with the wrong people when i drink tequila uh-huh. <laughs> all right so doing tequila and Speaking of being riled up, what type of drunk would you consider yourself as nowadays? Ooh. Now? Yeah. I feel like I would be a sad drunk. A sad drunk? Okay. <laughs> but before, I would be, uh, I would hype you up type of drunk and be like, hey, yo, take a shot. 
take a shower with me and then you know just mm. have fun type of thing be on like those good vibes <clears throat> um even when i'm out <clears throat> sorry you're good my friends there are certain people there's certain people that would be angry drunks so yeah. when they're angry i'm just like ignoring it and just trying to have fun because i feel like why waste your time being angry mm -hmm. but i do have moments where if i were to get really really drunk and someone was to like really push me to that edge to get angry i could become an angry drunk mm -hmm. i could but i mainly i'm mainly a happy drunk but i know when i got drunk last time on stream i was a sad drunk <laughs> I was legit sad because <laughs> I ended up ending stream and, I was, and then my mods told me they were like, yeah, you started crying and they were asking me why I was crying. And I was like, I didn't even know why I was crying, but I was so drunk that I don't remember. Mm. Two so I just I downed two soju bottles in 30 minutes. Yeah, probably a bad idea, but <laughs> it happened. All right, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And we'll transition to more so heavier topics now. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're comfortable, give us an overview of like your relationships that you've been in from the whatever you consider to be the first one up until today. Okay. <clears throat> in sixth grade, I remember this guy, he caught my eye because I was like, oh, his hair is so nice. And then I ended up dating him. Uh, we're still friends to this day. Like I still, well, I, I keep, I try to keep in touch with him, but you know how people kind of disappear and they do their own thing. Yeah. So I haven't really talked to him, but, um, yeah, he, I just dated him for like a month and I was like, I was, you know, in sixth grade, I didn't even know what I was doing. Uh, we, all we did was hold hands, hold hands going to class. And, um, I ended up breaking out with him because I was like, I, t I lied to him. I was like, um, I don't want my parents to find out, so I have to break up with you. <laughs> and what, were, what was I, 13 years old? Wait, what, what are you, how old are you when you're in sixth grade? Like 11? <laughs> oh yeah, that was, yeah. So I basically <laughs> said that. At, I was like, yeah, I don't want my parents to find out. They're going to get mad at me. So I broke up with him. Um, so it wasn't serious. And then, let's see. Well, I didn't, I haven't been in too many relationships. Like officially, right? Yeah, whatever you consider. Okay. Um, my next relationship was with Sam, with Aimbot, in eighth grade. Oh. We dated for like, I think a year. And then he cheated on me. Yeah, he got drunk mm -hmm. <laughs> in the closet with his friends and made out with some girl. Uh, oops, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and then... <laughs> uh i don't i was still with him but i ended up breaking with him because i i forgot why uh, mm -hmm. we were young yeah we were kids um i think that's why we broke up because we were kids yeah uh -huh. i can't remember it was so long ago man i'm old and then <laughs> going into high school um i don't think i was in a relationship ninth ninth grade 10th grade, I think that that's when I dated the football player. Okay. Um, I dated him for like, what, a couple months? Like six months or something? Then he cheated on me too. With his ex. <laughs> Men are trash. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, he cheated on me with his ex. And someone told me. I forgot who told me. I don't remember. Then I dated someone else. Um, I didn't, I, it wasn't like a real relationship, but I really liked him. Um, and then I remember breaking up with him because I was leaving, going to college, and he was a year younger than me. So I broke up with him, and I really broke up his heart. I broke his heart. Or maybe he was a, maybe he was a rebound. I don't remember. Long I forgot. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but I, I I remember really liking him, but I forgot. Oh, I, yeah, I remember. I liked him, but there was someone else. <clears throat> there was someone else. That's why. And then I ended up choosing the other guy. I know, I know, that's really bad. But I chose the other guy and ended dating him. Um, I dated him for four years. 
Oh, so high school going into college. Um, yeah, it didn't work out between us, and then he, he passed away. He got into a motorcycle accident, and he passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so there's that, and then me and Sam ended up reuniting. So that's me and him now, and we're still in a relationship. Our seventh year anniversary is this year. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. I know. There, I mean, there wasn't too many relationships. How many was that? Like four? Four or five? Yeah, four or five. I mean, Sam's twice. That's a so lot. Yeah. yeah, Sam is considered one. Uh-huh. He's learned his lesson, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, eight? How was there eight? All right. <laughs> so Clinton, when I was in sixth grade... <clears throat> Then Sam, that's one. Another the, the jock. The dude that I broke his heart. Daniel. And then Sam again. So if anything, that's five. That's five. That's a lot. That's five. Yeah, sorry, I had to think about it. <laughs> it's okay. Alright, so with that being said, what relationship <laughs> advice can you give to people? Hmm. Mm, the best relationship advice to give to people is to treat your relationship like you would treat your best friend because you don't ever want to stop putting an effort if that makes sense the way you treat your you know the way you treat your you know a relationship friendship anything it's a two way it's a two it's a two-way street like it has to come from both people so as long as you treat them you know the way you would treat your best friend and you consider all of i guess all of their feelings and their point of view mm -hmm. you'll make it work mm -hmm. nice that's, that's my best advice thank you for that no problem all right so moving on, how are you mentally as a now? Oh, I'm a mess. Oh, why is that? <laughs> I don't, I feel like, okay, so certain days, like, I wake up and I'm like, good, right? And then all of a sudden something happens, something hits me, and I'm just like, boom, my mood just switches. Or some days when I wake up, like, I don't even want to wake up. I don't want to get out of bed. I just want to lay there. Um... I don't know what it is, but I feel like quarantine really, really, really affected me on, um, on that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's depression because I just don't, I just don't feel like I am depressed, but I feel like I go through the motions of someone that can be. Because, I don't know, I just feel like it would be 10 times worse if I was depressed. I don't want to, I don't want to like put a definition on it, but just in general, like me... I feel like I'm a lot stronger than than I, you know, than I feel like I am. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I just feel like I'm, I I feel like I've been through so much in life that I should not be depressed and I have so much to be grateful for. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Got it. So that's so, your mental now? Yeah, that is. That is. And I mean, oh sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So oh, I would follow up with that with another question. So when you felt like you were at your lowest point in your life, how did you pick yourself out of that? Hmm. When I was at my lowest point, <laughs> I think I just kept myself busy. Mm hmm. I think I kept myself busy with like going to the gym keeping myself distracted like playing games but also I feel like when I do that I forget to eat I'm not taking care of like my hunger but I'm just in general like distracting my mind yeah um sometimes I would I would go for alcohol I remember this one time um I would like just drink on stream just because I was really sad but I didn't want to show it mm-hmm um, so I just drank and got drunk and then everyone just had fun with me when I was drunk. <laughs> so there's that. But I don't, you know, don't, I'm not saying like you should do that because nobody should 
turn to alcohol when they're sad because they'll just make th things 10 times worse so yeah i just i think the main thing is just to keep myself busy i need it what i need to do though when i'm feeling like that is clean i want to make that into a habit because i have so much laundry that i've washed that just sits in the basket and i need to i need to fold it and put it away just don't do it uh-huh so yeah that's yeah, that's my best advice for for that. Okay, and you already mentioned how quarantine has affected you in some way, right? Mm hmm So, how else has COVID impacted your life? Oh. Well, thank goodness I, I haven't caught it. My parents haven't caught it. Sam hasn't caught it. Um, my brother, too. My brother and his family hasn't caught it. But my brother's wife's mom and dad and her brother um they actually caught it but they live in different households um i'm just worried because my dad doesn't you know he's not in the best health yeah so because of that i don't i don't want to risk it for him mm. but i mean overall i feel like my family and i we've gotten closer because of covid like before i don't i, I feel like if covid never happened we would not have been able to stay in the house like literally 24 seven with each other all the time. So I feel like we've we've grown in that aspect and we've become a lot more patient with each other, living with each other and stuff. Yeah. So I think that's like the only benefit. Um, during peak like quarantine COVID, I hated it because I just wanted to go to the gym. So I ended up getting a squat rack I mean, squat rack is really expensive, right? It's like 800 something plus the weights and the, the, the bar. Yep. So that's like another $400. So that's a lot. Um, I ended up getting a squat rack. It's in my garage, but I don't put it into use because going to the gym versus working out alone, it's such a different environment. But mm -hmm. I guess that's another positive too. Like if I really wanted to, I could work out here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't... I don't see any negatives in a sense from COVID besides um, it affecting my mental. Cause I feel like I used to be a lot stronger like mentally and emotionally before quarantine. But since quarantine, I feel like I'm just always in my head. I'm just overthinking sure. things, uh, just putting myself in these thoughts that I don't need to put myself into. But I, I guess I just have to retrain my mind again. It's like, you know, like a muscle you just gotta retrain it, just tell it until you, you go back to what it used to be type yep. of thing <laughs> gotcha okay thanks for sharing that all right top five anime all time oh, okay uh uh full metal alchemist brotherhood really good love it recommend it mm because i grew up watching dragon ball right i mm -hmm. love dragon ball but if you think about the storyline of dragon ball compared to like for example my hero academia i feel like my hero academia is more like emotionally drawn with dragon ball z it's kind of like you fight you get stronger you get defeated by an enemy you get stronger like i, I feel like that's the only thing about dragon ball it's like the storyline is just constantly fighting and just overcoming your your enemies but with my hero academia is just more of like learning to accept who you are but also um you know because if you think about it do you watch my hero academia yeah okay because you know how deku you know he didn't have any powers but he still worked hard to somehow get powers like it just gives you know it gives you hope type of thing so Dragon Ball, I would consider one of my favorite animes because I grew up watching it. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist for sure. I really liked Trigun also when I was a kid. I watched that too. Um, I, hmm, this is hard. Yeah. I'm what other animes? I'm trying to think. What else is there? Because I really, I really like. Um, Demon Slayer because of how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. I know there's other animes that I really, really like. Can't think of them. What other two are there? 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no problem. Okay, I can't think of them right now. I'll get back to you. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk about social media other than Twitch first. So, what social media platforms have you tried using, and whatever are you active on? Share your thoughts about each platform. Okay. Um, I'm on Instagram. My current Instagram is the one that I used before I started streaming on Twitch. So I just rebranded it. Um, Instagram. So basically it has followers from like my IRL mm -hmm. life and stuff. Mm, Instagram, I feel like it's just so hard to grow on. Unless you post thirst traps. Or you post like really, 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 really like fun, funny things. But sometimes being funny isn't even enough, you know, like, yeah, I feel like people who just post thirst traps or like really aesthetically pleasing things, you can grow. But that's how I feel about Instagram. <clears throat> it's just hard for me to grow on there. Uh, I just like scrolling on Instagram because of uh, what is it? Are those I think they're called reels. Yeah, they're reels, reels? of uh -huh. um uh recipes this is just real quick mm -hmm. you know like just recipes like oh i'm craving some noodle recipes and really quick just go type in like noodles and then the there's reels of it and i'm like oh this noodle looks good this one looks good and i'll just you know eat those make those noodles or something <clears throat> and then with twitter twitter i made because of twitch so i made that um and then i started i think like following people and then i feel like twitter it's it's such a it's you know cancel culture you know type of thing mm -hmm. like i feel like twitter is such a, a negative environment sometimes which is why i try to avoid it See. usually usually but i can't lie i'm a hypocrite too because i go on there when i'm really upset and i tweet something based on my feelings you know like so it, it's kind of like an outlet for me too it's an outlet for positive thoughts, for negative thoughts, just in general. Um, I just feel like I, I, I like posting on there when I'm sad because it's like people can relate to it type of thing. And um, hopefully people know that by me posting these tweets or stuff and stuff, um, they know that they're not alone type of thing. You know, like I'm I'm here with them. Gotcha. So that's what um, I try to do with Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then I have TikTok. TikTok, oh my god. I don't know. I started doing TikTok because uh, my community told me to do it, so I did it. And then I was just like, I don't want to do dances because I'm so cringe. <laughs> so I don't know. I ended up doing like some cringe things, and I was like, okay, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. So I try to think of ideas to post on TikTok. It's just hard because TikTok's algorithm is like hit or miss. Huh. but i still post things there you know I, I sometimes i post so often that i get so burned from it that i take like a two-week break from it because i'm just like i'm not getting the results i want why yeah. not and then i see other people blowing up and i'm just like i that's when i sit there and i compare myself to other people and i'm like I, you should never do that don't mm -hmm. do that that's like your worst enemy do not compare yourself to anybody else you are unique you are different so <clears throat> that's what, how I feel about TikTok. I like TikTok. I just I just find myself scrolling on it too long, and I just waste too many too much time on there. Yeah. Yep. So I try not to do that. <laughs> and then we have Fan House. Fan House is literally just for me to motivate other people to go to the gym or work out or just take care of themselves. Because mm -hmm. what I've been posting there is just like gym content, also what I eat. But I would randomly post things like what I do during the day too, since um, <clears throat> there's certain things that I don't post, so I post it on there. And it is okay. a subscription base, so it's another way to um, help me as a content creator since Fan House pays their content creators 90%, okay. and they only take 10%. So you can price your subscriptions as how much it is or whatever you, you want it to be. So I was like, oh, let me just give it a try. And it was like, you know, another way to create content type of thing and motivate people mm -hmm. so i wanted to do that i like it i really like it but it's it's definitely hard to go on fan house because there's no 
there is no way for people to scroll and just find you it's just more of word of mouth like Got if it. i talk about my fan house that's the only way you'll know about my fan house that's it um there's no there's no real real growth i guess unless you have a big community that supports you already type of thing i see mm -hmm. um i think and then twitch would that be considered social media yeah right yeah yeah we'll talk about twitch for sure okay. um before that you mentioned youtube's difficult what did you mean mm -hmm. by that oh well, yeah youtube i don't know what to post i don't know i don't know what content to create there wilson uh, i, I know you like you do you do you do your podcast there right um, uh, I post up there, yeah. Oh, okay. Just I was, do you, post what content. Else, what else do you do on YouTube? Just like vlogs, reactions, and just gaming stuff. Yeah. It's very random. That's awesome, though. I know you, you're doing great on YouTube. I need to take some notes from you. Not great, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, it's just, I don't know what to post on YouTube, so I did like one video. Mm hmm and then the other video was my trailer. <clears throat> so, I mean, like my Twitch trailer. So, it's just on YouTube, though. Yeah. Uh, But, I mean, I'm hoping to go traveling soon. So, then maybe I can do some vlogging or something, I hope. Okay. I don't know. YouTube gotcha. is hard for me. My brain is just like, YouTube? Oh, no. Blake. Alrighty. The bulk of it. Let's talk about Twitch. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get started? What made you decide to stream? Oh, <clears throat> that is my friend that I go to the gym with pretty often. He basically said, hey, you play games and you're kind of funny. Why don't you stream? So I was like, people want to watch me play games, you know? Like, I was like weirded out by it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I ended up looking up, you know, what Twitch was and I made an account and I started, <clears throat> sorry, I started networking and talking to people and I was like, huh, this is kind of cool, you know, like, but I didn't start streaming yet. So I just basically made friends, you know, got to know people on Twitch. And then those people on Twitch were like, hey, you should start streaming too. And I was like, um, um, I don't know. You know, like I said, I'm really shy. Like I, I was really shy. So mm -hmm. I started I started getting convinced to start streaming, so I ended up sh streaming for the first time in 20... What is... 2019? Yeah, 2019! <laughs> in tw February of 2019. So then that's when I started going for affiliate. It took mm -hmm. me a whole month because I was so scared of streaming. I, I literally, like, streamed, like... You have to stream seven days. Yeah. I literally streamed, like, once every week-ish, so I ended up hitting affiliate in March. But yeah, so that's how that's how my streaming career started. I was really scared of streaming, and if I, I got convinced by my IRL, one of my IRL friends, and then also the friends that I made online. Okay. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, since you've been on the platform for a while, I guess give us an overview of what you've been through on Twitch, however you want to say it, and whatever you want to include, and then I'll ask you very specifics. Okay. Um. My experience with Twitch, I would say I made so many friends through this experience and I feel like they helped me get through quarantine and just helped me get through life type of thing Yeah. because of their company. So I'm going to be forever grateful for that. Uh, but there are people who, you know, remember how I had that conversa conversation with you, IRL, where it was like, I ran into this person that uses people type of thing and it took me a while to realize it. Like there are people out there and i know you haven't run into that thank goodness but there are legit people out there who will use and abuse um and take people for you know take advantage of people yeah so i ran into that and that literally broke my heart because i ended up um losing friends from that but i guess like technically you don't lose friends it's you you just discover you discover them for who they are type of thing mm -hmm. so um but yeah, but I try not to I, I try not to dwell on the negative things because if I really think about it, I really want to just focus on the positive things because I feel like I've made lifetime friends through Twitch. Like, for example, Mish, like who would have known that she's in L.A., you know, like so mm -hmm. close. And then like every time we talk, it's always good vibes. And I, I love her for that. 
But I know she's been busy, so I, I get that. Life gets busy. But she knows that I still love her always. You know, like, I, I feel that for a lot of my Twitch friends. So, they become my real friends. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I've had a really good experience on it. So, with your experience, when did you realize you could, like, you were constantly growing to the point of becoming a partner? Um, I think this... I, you know, I didn't even think I could be a partner. Mm -hmm. I think what it was, was just me having another goal that I wanted to reach. And because I was vocal about it with my community, they really believed in me and they pushed me to go for it. Be I I don't have a lot of confidence in myself. Um, you know, like the other night I hit Diamond and Apex and I was like, no, I don't deserve it. I got carried, you know, like I, I always try my best to be humble, you know, but... Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes, I guess, there are certain things that I do deserve, but I, I still play it as if, like, I don't deserve it. It's kind of like imposter syndrome. Yeah. So, it's I'm always fighting, like, myself when I shouldn't be doing that because I really should, like, love myself more. Mm -hmm. It's just a bad habit. So, um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, uh, just, like, the push for partner. Okay, yeah, so I started pushing for partner because my community was just like, you know, you should... Well, I think at first I spoke to my mods about it. I was just... I, I, I just shot shot the idea and they were like, oh, yeah, why why not? You know, like, do it. Mm -hmm. You already... You pretty much... I think I was averaging, like, 60-ish at the time. And they were like, just do it. Um, Give it a try. See what happens. What's the worst that can happen? You just don't get it. And... So I started pushing for it and I told, every, you know, I announced it on Twitter, I announced it on Discord and just everybody was so fucking supportive. And I was just like in shock, you know, like, wow, the support was unreal. Um, and then when I started doing the partner push, you know, the first time I applied, I did get denied because my numbers weren't technically there. But the second time I applied, I did get it. But overall, I just feel like partner is it's just overrated. It's, it's really overrated besides the fact that you get more emotes and a little check mark. Um, I, because there's always a plateau. Once you hit partner, the hype dies down and then everybody kind of like goes back and does their own thing or, or whatnot. So then that, I feel like that's what happened with me. So I started looking at my numbers and I was like allowing it to define who I am as a streamer. And I was like, I'm a partner. How am I, how am I not hitting this average anymore? So I started like going downhill with my mental and I was just focusing on numbers but when in reality I should just be grateful for what I have type of thing yeah which is hard for me to do that because mm -hmm. I was just I was just overthinking it I was worrying too much about what others think when I should really be worried about myself and just love myself type of thing mm -hmm. but yeah so gotcha. I didn't yeah I didn't realize I was gonna hit partner I just I just it just happened mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, since you also mentioned like how Twitch can affect you mentally, how would mm -hmm. you weigh the pros and cons of being a streamer, especially oh. like from what you've been through? Yeah, I I always try to focus on the pros versus the cons, but there are cons to it. Like mm -hmm. for example, I catch myself not taking care of myself. I catch myself missing meals. I catch myself not stretching enough or um, drinking enough water and just always being on the screen. And you know, cause I got LASIK eye surgery. I need to focus on my eye health. I need to give it some more eye drops and stuff. But you know, I forget to do that cause yeah. I'm just either gaming, I'm doing something or I'm trying to edit things or focus on ideas. And that is the, that is like the con. But the pros is that, um, like I said, I, I've, I've gotten really, really close with a lot of people and I consider them, you know, like literally lifetime friends. Like I can't wait until boss comes down. Boss is from Philly. Um, I met him. I actually met him when I went to New York. So, you know, just literally like being able to hang out with people that you talk to on Discord every single day or you're just texting them every single day. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy because you who would have known that you would have this connection with someone over the internet. And it's yeah. just like, a lot of people don't understand that if they're not on this platform. But I know I know you do, because you've, you've done so many IRL meetups and stuff. Like, 
it's it's, it's kind of life changing, honestly. Yeah. It is. Agreed. Mm hmm. Okay, so did you have any other pros and cons? Um. I think I said all the cons. It's basically my health. I think I forget about my health too much about cons. Yeah. And then just running into fake people, people who will use and abuse. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, my, my main pro would be like the friendship I make, uh, the friendships I've made. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, I, you know, another thing that's funny is one of my IRL friends, he follows a lot of like, um how how do I say this? Um do you know Alley Cakes? I think I recognize she's, the name. She's uh she takes like really or uh, is it lewd lewd is no nude but lewd ludy? Lude? Lude? Uh -huh. lude? She takes like lewd pictures on Instagram and stuff and he follows her. He really likes her and stuff. He's like my IRL friend. And uh, and he's like, Do you know her? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I know her. Like uh I'm a VIP in her channel or something. And he's like, oh, no way. Like, he's really shocked because she's... She, it, technically, she is famous, right? Like, she has thousands and thousands of followers. Yeah. And he's looking at me like, you know, oh, my IRL friend, you're just a weirdo. Like, you're Linda, you know? And he's like, she knows you? She talks to you? You know? Like, uh -huh. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, she's like a normal person. She's really nice. And he's just shocked. <laughs> mm. Stuff like that. That's I think that's funny. I think that's a pro like i know people that are i guess like instagram famous or whatever and whatnot and then um i don't flex it for sure i don't flex it but it's just like that's why i'm just like huh like, why, why are you so shocked like huh. she's, she's like a she's like a really cool person she's normal yeah yeah so that's another pro like being able to meet people that are oh i also i also know jordy i was like a big fan of her youtube you know her She's like R6. She was on R6, the game. And like, she started doing like these YouTube videos of flirting with guys. And like, she she does no webcam or anything. And like, she got like really big on YouTube and she started streaming on Twitch. And I met her through that. And I was like, oh, I'm like such a big fan. And she like recognizes me. She calls me Linda, you know, like that's another pro. I'm like, oh my God, she recognizes me. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, you know, I, I get to uh, chat with my um, idols type of thing, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Okay, so that being said, what advice would you give to people who are trying to get started with streaming and are trying to grow on the platform? Okay, okay. Um, get started with streaming, I would say focus on having fun. Like, when you start streaming, don't focus on numbers. Focus on having fun because the numbers will eventually be there. Have fun and network. Network as in like, um, go to people's streams, chat with them, ask, you know, like build a relationship, build a friendship. And hopefully from there, like it'll get the, get people interested enough to come hang out on your streams type of thing. Because a lot of people on Twitch, I feel like they do that support for support type of thing. But that's like, that's like the worst. Basically, someone is saying, like, I'll only support you if you support me. I think that's the worst type of um, way to look at Twitch. Yeah. Um, the best way to look at it is just more of go into people's stream because you enjoy their content. You want to hang out with them, get to know them. And then, like, if they show enough interest and if they want to get to know you, they'll stop by your stream. You know, like stuff like that. That's that's the best way to look at it. And just have fun when you're gaming, when you're just chatting, when you're doing whatever it is, just Mm -hmm. Just enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy it. Because when if you enjoy it, your chat will enjoy it. Yeah. And what was the second question? No, just like advice in general. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, that would be like my main advice. And it, it, the, and the whole partner check mark thing, guys, it's it's not that important. It's it's not that big, you know. Like I feel like I'm still. I feel like I should hide it sometimes when I go into new people's chat, just because like. I feel like I might overwhelm people or overwhelm the streamer. I just sometimes I just want to sit there and just chat with someone and not have them freak out because of a check mark. Because I don't ever want a check mark to define define me. You know, like I'm just a normal person. 
I'm not that cool, you know, I'm kind of weird. I still walk into walls, like I trip over my dogs, uh, you know, like I'm a normal person. Yeah. And I don't, I, I just don't want people to like be intimidated by a check mark. That's mm -hmm. why, yeah. But I think you guys know, like I talked to Matt, I talked to Mish, I talked to Goo, I talked to Pato. I'm just a normal person. Normal but amazing. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question about you like being a partner as part time versus full time. Like what are your mm. thoughts on that? And how sustainable it's been for you, like living wise. I feel I don't know how you define part time or full time when it comes to streaming, but yeah. Um like a full time job would be what, forty hours a week? Yes. Eighty hours two weeks? Correct. Um, I feel like streaming is a lot more than that. And what I do on a daily basis is I'm on my PC from morning till afternoon to night. Yeah. So I'll be on my PC for like 12, 12 ish hours at times, you know, 12, 15 hours, either networking or editing or even just playing games with people um to me i don't feel like I, I i know i don't stream 40 hours a week i definitely know i stream three days a week um and when i stream it's it's not gonna be like 12 hours every stream it's gonna be like five to six hours because i get really really tired um but overall it is sustainable for me i think mainly because i live with my parents so i basically pay for the bills type of thing mm -hmm. um but if i were to move out and have my own place i feel like i would struggle a little more just because of the fact that rent right now in la is so expensive <laughs> it's it's horribly expensive like for a one bedroom it's probably almost like one thousand eight hundred dollars not including utilities like it's just expensive it's just stupid expensive yeah. um but i mean in the beginning yes it was it, it's it's always a struggle regardless twitch is always gonna be um i guess you could say it's it's gonna be unstable mm -hmm. when it comes to income but when it comes to how much work i put in i feel like i put in a lot of work i feel like i put in more than 80 hours every two weeks i would say because i when i'm in bed i'm still I'm still thinking of ideas. I'm scrolling on TikTok or I'm editing on my phone. Um, it's just always constant, 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 constant. And then, yeah, but with 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 um, paying the bills, yeah, it gets my bills paid, but it's still very unstable. One month can be good. One month can be bad. One month can be really horrible. But overall, like, it's you know. It's, it's I'm, I'm still thankful like because it, it's you know it's your friends that are supporting you they're supporting your business you know so at the end yeah. of the day i'm always gonna be thankful but it is not it is not stable <laughs> that's one thing i can say for sure gotcha mm -hmm. okay so finishing up the twitch questions i wanted to know your thoughts about the perception of streaming as a guy versus a girl Mm -hmm. And also another question, um, what were your parents' thoughts about you streaming versus now? Okay, I'll answer the um, parent question first. Sure. Okay, um, it took me a while to tell my parents. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know my? They don't know about this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they don't like it. It's gonna be my one year anniversary of this in March. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm they don't know about it. So it's been almost a whole year. Of walking around the house with a big old sweater on or a lot like literally this is I buy like big t-shirts just to hide this because I'm like they're old school they're just old school they're like oh you know girls shouldn't get tattoos you're the youngest blah, 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 you know stuff like that so I just I just don't want to tell them I'm too yeah. scared um and uh yeah, so it took me a while to tell them about streaming. I think it was when I started paying for their bills um, when I told them, like, I'm going to take this seriously. Uh, I just told them at first that I was just doing it for fun. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I have allergies. You're okay. Um, but yeah, it's just, 
it's hard talking to my parents sometimes like that's why i told you like communication is really hard with my parents mm -hmm. but i try i really try my best when it comes to talking to them and telling them how i feel and stuff but it's just it's just a hard uh it's a hard topic yeah, opening up to them that. and stuff yeah but i mean one day when i told them about this mm -hmm. i feel like i won't be living here anymore uh like i'll have my own place you know like They'll, uh -huh. they'll be like, you know, she made her own decision. She's, it's her own body. I mean, I hope that's what they'll say, you know? Gotcha. <laughs> okay, what was the other question? So your thoughts about the perception of streaming as a guy versus a girl on the platform? Ooh. Um, I feel like, okay, so when I started streaming, I feel like I, w I was networking and meeting people for like six months. So, I, I think, I think a male and a female has the the same amount of chances of growing, but it just depends on how hard and how much you work for it, um, and how and how like how entertaining you are too. I think the main thing with because if you think about it, the top ten streamers are what men. I think Pokey's like number eleven. I'm not I'm not too sure. But it's something like that. But I know men dominate the, the streaming world. So I think it's just how a male entertained others versus a female. Because there's a couple partner streamers I know that are really, that there are males and they get way more numbers than I do. And they're way, I feel like they're way more entertaining in, in the sense of like um, keeping chat, chat interactive. So. They're not game based. They're just more like just chatting type of base um, of streamers. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I I feel like it's it's an equal chance. It just depends on how hard you work, how hard you want it, and how much how how much time you will put into networking and getting to know people and building relationships. So yeah, that's my opinion on it. Okay. And now at this point, we'll transition to the last few questions I have. I am looking at the time. Okay. All right. Quick hitters. Biggest pet peeve. Mm. My biggest pet peeve when it comes to streaming or just biggest in pet peeve? In general, peeves? yeah. Oh. In general. Uh. But. I don't know. Hmm. My biggest pet peeve would be. If. 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 Um. If me and Sam order food and he eats all of his food before I can taste it, that's a pet peeve of mine. I want to try everyone's food before they eat it all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Got it. Interesting. <laughs> all right. I gotta have a bite at least. Let's do your favorite quote. Oh, my favorite quote. Yeah, I have quoted the days all the time on my streams. But I don't know if I have a favorite. Mm, but there's one that I always say. I always say, keep it real, keep it moving. Because I really dislike people who are two-faced. Because I always try my best to say it how it is or just to keep it real with people. Because that's all I ever want from others. Just to keep it real with me. Because I, I don't like... I don't like it when people are fake or if they're two-faced or if they if they're lying to me. I just I just don't like that. So that's one. Keep it real, keep it moving. Nice. Okay. <laughs> this was a question from like way earlier when you were talking about working at Finish Line. What was the mm -hmm. best pair of shoes that you purchased from Finish Line? <gasps> I remember buying blazers. I don't have them anymore. They're so they're such a long time ago. I, they were so expensive. They were like $120. And I was so happy getting them because they were expensive mm -hmm. and they're really nice. And they just recently released. They were like some gray high top blazers, some Nike blazers. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to those shoes. I, I, I don't know. This is a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite. Gotcha. All right. So this is my last three. So what would you consider as your greatest accomplishment in life so far and greatest failure or regret? Greatest accomplishment. Hmm. Greatest accomplishment. 
could be could be hitting twitch partner because that was really hard <laughs> yeah that was really really hard or if you talk about the grind getting to diamond on apex that was freaking hard too that was really really hard i've never grinded to diamond on apex and that was really hard but partner for sure is 10 times harder because you know you gotta have consistent numbers twitch is twitch you know twitch says no twitch says yes but that was that was one of my greatest accomplishments hitting twitch partner um and then one of my uh what was it, it was failures failure or regret regret failure or regret mm. When I think about regrets, I don't like thinking about regrets because I don't like that word. But just in general, the day that um, my ex or my friend passed, I had a chance to see him while we were fighting that day. Um, I, I guess like I could have seen him. I was so basically he met up at you know all the guys that he rides bikes with at a, at a friend's house, and I was at that friend's house. Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with my girlfriend, and he texted me. He's like. That he was gonna be there and i was mad at him so i didn't go out to see him and that's when he got into the motorcycle accident and i i guess in a sense i do regret it because i could have seen him i could i don't know it's just like i know i shouldn't think like that but i feel mm -hmm. like i could have stopped him from going yeah i could have you know been like hey let's go eat or something or whatever but you know it's just that's how life is gotcha. it happens yeah so that's one that's one regret that I can think of on the That's top okay. of my head. That's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what was your first impression of me? When did I meet? What, like IRL? I mean, it could be both if you remember the first. Well, I mean, I remember when I met you IRL. I, uh -huh. but I think on stream, I, I think you were playing Valorant. It was. It was through. Well, I met you because of Catloon. When she raided oh, you. Oh, Catloon! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a long time ago. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was. A, it was a while ago. I think I then I came to your stream and you were playing Valorant, right? Or think so. Doing... It's possible. I for, yeah. I for, I forget. I literally forget the first time I met you on stream. But I no, okay. I do remember. You know, IRL. Mm -hmm. I was really shy. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be Wilson. And I'm gonna be all his friends. I'm nervous. But I was like. Once we like sat down and we talked to each other, I was like, wow, you're really chill. Like you're actually easy to talk to. Like super, super, super easy to talk to. Cause I remember you asked me to do a podcast and I was like, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't really know Wilson. I'm kind of nervous. You know, I was, yeah. I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm really shy. And then when I sat down and talked to you, I was like, oh wow, he's really cool. Like he's just a down to earth guy. Like he's really chill. And you're just so easy to talk to. So that's what I thought about you when I met you in person. Yeah, and Thank I was like, you. yeah, I'm down to do the podcast. I was like, Wilson's so chill. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. No problem. All right. Thumbs down to the last question. So mm -hmm. using your connection, who would you like to see as a future guest on this podcast and why? Ooh. You should. You should. <laughs> I'm going to expose him again. Aimbot. <laughs> <laughs> so he can answer all of the questions that I answered, <laughs> but in his version, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be funny. Okay, I like that. Yeah. All also, right. he's never done anything like this, so it would be fun to see his uh, to watch. To watch, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm gonna close this out and let you go, mm -hmm. but what are you planning to do for the rest of the night? I'm gonna eat some dinner. Let's go, okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been the Chain Gang Podcast episode 56 featuring Linda, aka Valan. Linda, thank you for being here and for sharing your life experiences and stories with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Do you have any last few words for everyone who's going to be watching this or for those who are in chat right now? Um, enjoy life because you never know when it'll be your last. So do everything with gratitude and be grateful for what you have in life. Yay. I like that. <laughs> All right, folks. 
Again, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, we have the exclamation guest command, which is a direct link to Linda's Twitch channel. She is a streamer, so make sure to drop a follow if you haven't. Meet her, say hi, say what's up. And other than that, please give this video a thumbs up, guys, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I welcome you all to the Chen Gang with open arms. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is coming soon. All right, take care, folks. Peace. <laughs>